Hello and welcome back. Today we'll be trying to dress up this character. And first we're gonna start with a simpler clothing like shirts, but then we're gonna go a bit more in depth and try to create more complex clothing. So here on the left side at the bottom of my screen, you can see what keys I'm going to be pressing. So if you're confused in some parts, just look here and let's start. So third thing is I'll just make it a bit easier for me to see where I am going to make the shirt. So that part I'm going to mask. First, I'm going to use a lasso mask, which you can find in here. Hold it a bit longer. Here's a lasso mask. And now just draw. So I will get a t-shirt shape. You can try following me how I'm drawing. And when you have a base, you can switch out to the mask brush which is M and just draw on the mesh sorry I don't know why I didn't go to the mask tool okay so now I'll mask close to the bottom and fix the neck part now you don't have to do this part you can skip to the modeling part but this is creates a nice base to follow. I will hold control to clean up a bit of the mask because I think I messed too much and the sharp edge is fine. You can actually smooth if you're not happy with it but it's not gonna change much. Okay so when you have this one what we can do is go to the masking and mask extract. Now, I don't really want to solidify on it and it takes a bit longer when you're solidifying. So let's turn off this and just press OK. We'll have to wait for a bit. And when the operation is over, we'll have something like this. So I'll move to a new, create new collection, move the object to new collection so I can hide the body and have only this collection now. So from this part of the body, we're going to create shirt. So I'll make a new cube, position it in the center, go in edit mode and delete it completely. And then in the modifiers, I'm going to add a mirror modifier, turn on clipping and turn on vertices visible and start putting the vertices on the mesh. So first I'm going to select vertices, the snapping tool and choose the face mode. And to create the vertices, you have to hold control and press right click and you will create vertices. Now, if you will have like we started with the cube and the cube will be selected and you will start press control click, you're going to get a mess. So always delete it and now we can start remeshing this now don't be afraid too much about this this is going to be very quick remesh and try to keep it as low poly as possible because we don't really need a lot of polys for the shirt you can try putting uh, vertices in the same positions but it doesn't really matter that much in the beginning because at any point of time we can go over it and try fixing the problems. Now again, this is not body ray topology, so we don't worry about the shapes. Just trying to keep a clean, similar size spaces and that's going to create a clean shape of the shirt. All right. So this is how I usually start. And by starting this way, it's going to be much easier for you to position every single face. Again, if you see me tweaking a little bit the position of the vertices, because I can see that some 
sizes of the pieces are too much different. So I'll try to position them in the way where they would become a bit more similar size. All right. Now I can start adding in here. Again, I'm trying to keep it very low, but you don't have to go too low. But in the end, we can use a subdivision modifier at any point of time and add more vertices, which we're going to be doing it a bit later. But by kicking this very low poly, we can finish this retopology in just a few minutes. And that is why we're doing this this way. Okay, so at this point, don't rush too much. And when I have this part, I'm always thinking how to make it better. So you can make it like this. One, two, three, four. There are other ways of doing this and for particular situations one way or another might be a bit better. So I'll try to keep this going into the crevice of the body. But not following too much of every single small detail on it because we really don't want to add too much vertices because we won't even need them. Oh, when you're trying to extrude from the middle, you're gonna get into this problem when it stays only in the middle. What I can do is just select the place where you wanna extrude from and do the same shortcut as we did before by holding control and clicking right click. Now we have it extruded, but it's extruded not in the middle. Okay, so I will have three vertices here. Not too many, but I can still follow the shape. Okay, we can always fix, of course. So, yeah, no worries here. Now, I think this is a really good way for even practicing your topology. Of course, this is a bit different because we're not actually trying to follow every single shape we're just trying to create a base very nice flow base for our shirt which will make it have a clean look on it okay when we're done with the base of it now it's going to be a bit harder but not as hard as you may think one thing about retopology is just doing it if you think too much, you're gonna get confused, but if you're just trying to put the vertices in, it becomes a bit easier and a bit more relaxing. All right. So as you can see, I'm rotating a lot. I think I'm gonna add one more here to just get a cleaner oh, accidentally selected the wrong plane I always want to have a loop going around the neck it's going to make a cleaner shape cut of the neck I may be adding a bit too many vertices so I'm going to extend them and if um, ever we lacking one or two it's very easy to add more so i'm not worrying about that yeah just making the faces again look similar in the size and i can try extruding some of the points Uh, 
And again, I think this is too big of transition, so I will add one loop cut with Control R. Reposition the faces so they are the similar in size. And now I can add faces in here. And as you can see, it's not that hard. You just have to keep moving. And we're almost done with base of the shirt. It's really about just choosing which things you want to do first. Sometimes I start with the hands, sometimes with the body. Just finding an easier way to do everything for yourself. Doesn't mean it's going to be worse. -er. And... This bit of the bigger transition, I think I'm going to add one face here. Just to have a cleaner transition between faces. If at any point you think it's too many, you can select a loop and use dissolve edges and you won't have it. But I think we're in a decent place. It's not too much, not too many, not too much of the places filled. So this part might be tricky with the shoulder because we will be merging some of the vertices together because we don't really need that much for our sleeves. But we're just slowly f filling in stuff. It's not that confusing. Okay, so I will start drawing the sleeves from here, from the bottom, because these two vertices won't change. I will add a loop here because I want to have a straight loop running through the arm. Now how many vertices I'm adding here doesn't actually matter because this is going to be changing. I'll just fill in a few faces but we might end up deleting them soon. Okay. So I'll extend first loop. I see it connects nicely. Let's hide the body and see what's happening. I think everything looking perfectly fine. Add another one. And now we have a pretty nice flow. Let's add a face here. We can't add. We did something wrong. Nope. It's just a place where it does some face want to add. And this is where we merging the faces. So if it is confusing, let me repeat. So we have a flowing edge. I'm adding one face to here. And it's just one normal face filled. Oh, it filled in the wrong place so let's delete this face and re-add the new one and I'll just connect these two lines here and drag this point a bit further in and it looks like this very simple merging of the vertices nothing complicated another face now we have this dot 
Um, probably a lot of people won't recommend you doing this way. And it's not the best for animation. You can do many things in here. And it depends from what you actually want to do. So I'll add a loop here and just merge these. Add another face. Try extruding this. And see what's happening. The shoulder side on here is not actually animated. This place is more animated. So we can have a little bit of the mess on top. But if we're not really going for animation just to look, even if we're posing it's definitely we're doing too much work here. We could just simply try to fast forward here. And fill in the faces like this. Now let me show you a small trick. So if you fill here and now you have a hole in here. If, if you want to know if everything is going to connect in quads. You can select the loop and check how many vertices you have. So if the number is not equal it's 11. So we cannot um, divide it by 2. That means we will have one triangle, which means I can add one more vertice in here or here. Now, what I do is select all of these and see that I have three vertices that are not connected to the walls. And here we have three as well. And here too. So probably having here three would be the best call. But I'm not really worried about that now. So let's just start connecting here and see what's happening. Now we have here two and here one, which means now we need one more here. And I think this place actually would benefit for having more vertices because this has the least vertices. The sleeves have the least vertices for now. And this might be actually a bit more complicated to connect now because we don't have anyone here. We would need a lot of extension here to finish connecting this. So let's do a lot of testing now. Probably not a lot, just a bit. I'll move one vertice here down, nothing special. Add one face in here, connect. And at this point we only need to add one extension in here and we have a nice connection. Now this might be a bit messy because I can't connect it too well. Hmm. So it is a lot about testing and seeing what will work and what won't. I want to have a loop because the loops will make everything much easier. And there's many ways of creating a loop. So we'll have a loop and I don't really care about the how it is connected in here. I think we'll still have a pretty decent look on our shirt and especially that this part will be hidden under the clothing because we will add a bit more 
If you think that this part is too complicated uh, for you to model like this, uh, these sleeves of the shirt, then what I can recommend you is when you're trying to make a mesh, let's just quickly do a test. Doesn't won't take any long. When you're trying to retopo, start with your arms and do like this. Get all these loops in and then fill in the body from there. So that might actually be a bit easier and more comfortable for some people. And this one for others. Okay, so we have a base of the shirt. I'll probably lift up. So the neck will be more smooth. And let's unhide our body and see what's happening. So we're definitely going to be met up with something like this. What we can do is select the shirt. Um, you can actually create a folder and call basis. Um, and what you can do is du duplicate your shirt. Put it on a basis and just call it shirt and not use this one so in the way where we mess up with this shirt we always will have a base which we can start from new so what i'm gonna do is apply the mirror modifier and go into the sculpting mode now so we can fill up it quickly to look nice on the body first what we can do is use mesh filters and in mesh filters tools, we're going to be using inflate and just dragging somewhere on the side and inflating a shirt a little bit. Don't go much too. Don't inflate too much because the shirt still have to fill in the body. Now I'm going to just go with the grab tool and try to make it as smooth. Don't forget the mirror modifier so if you move a lot of things you cannot go back so you will probably have to start from the new shirt but if you just did few moves we can always control z back and start filling in at this point we can use subdivision or even multi -res. So let's use multi res and subdivide it only once. If you think this is too much work, what we can do is use a shrink wrap. Do it on the body. And let's put this even on the viewport. Apply it and we can inflate it again. Mesh filters, inflate again. And now the mesh is subdivided, but we can still quickly move it. You can subdivide it, but you don't have to. So shirts usually stay pretty close to the body and at this place if you move one place another might show up so what I usually do is just use I for inflate brush and just inflate in here so these edges comes closer to each other and we we have a shirt pretty quickly done Sometimes you see when you go into the report, something appears, so we can drag just a little bit in front so we don't see that. We can apply some material. I created one material for my shirt, shorts and shirt. How you can do it is just go into the viewport display and change the color here. And now we have an overalls 
just looks decently nice, very clean. Another thing that you can do for the viewport is that solidify. And if you don't want it go in the body, you can just change the position. Or just play with it. Where the body is touching. Oh. Accidentally pressed animation. And some of the edges will have this weird shading. Um, it's better to see if we are not using the color. And you can see it's a darker shading. So what we can do is use creasing, which is shift E or with control E, you can find it here, edge creasing. So now when we go into subdivide even more, we're going to keep it. Or if it doesn't disappear and still bothers you, first turn off the snapping tool and just add a loop cuts closer. And now we don't have it. Just a really nice looking shirt. Mm, let's go back with our material because I like that. And that's it for a shirt.